Hi, my hiking friends. It is so nice to see you here. And today I am going to share with you my top five learnings from the polar hike that I did in April with Fjallraven Polar. <laughs> I know it's sort of awkward talking winter hiking in the dead of summer and I'm sort of trying to compensate with my wintry sweater here but as you can hear the birds that are giving us a free soundtrack today uh, it is in the middle of summer but I feel that I have this knowledge and experience in my mind that I want to get out uh, before I forget it. So here's the video bookmark it for your next winter season when you will be going outside. I really hope so because winter hiking is so fun and awesome and I really couldn't recommend it more. So let's just uh, do the five tips then. Yes. Okay. First tip, your body is your heater. You know, the main concern we all have when we go outside in winter time is that we will be cold and especially we will be cold while sleeping. But the big, big thing you need to know is that your clothes don't give you warmth or your sleeping bag will not give you warmth. Your body is the one who is producing the heat and the clothes are there to catch the heat. So you need to keep yourself warm. You need to move around before going to the sleeping bag. Especially you need to move around, do some jumping jacks, push-ups, whatever you need to get your blood flowing. Then you will be warm inside of the sleeping bag. And many of the girls from the Fjallra and Polar who weren't experienced in winter hiking were cold in the first night. And then when uh, uh, we were told this uh, rule that the move around before going to the sleeping bag they were toasty and warm and me also I was very toasty in the sleeping bag so yeah your body is your heater not your clothes second rule the cold comes from the ground when speaking about sleeping, uh, you really need to pay attention to the insulation between the ground, the snow and yourself. Use whatever you have. You have your sleeping mat, but probably you will have some kind of big winter jacket. Put it under yourself, not on top of you, but under yourself. For example, the mat, the jacket and you, then you will have some extra insulation and that's what keeps you warm. I never got cold from the top. I always got cold uh, in the winter hike from the bottom. So I put all of my big snow pants and my polar parka underneath me. And then I was toasty warm. And I really loved this tip because then you really don't need to uh, tug along your big, big mat or like three mats to insulate you properly. Just use the clothes that you have. Also, if you are in, a, in an area where it is okay to have fir tree, uh, branches underneath you uh, like I have here 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 <laughs> uh, you can collect them and make yourself a soft and bouncy bed these branches are awesome for insulating but it is not so wise to uh, rely on these branches it, it's more of like emergency situation option I think let's not harm the trees too much but yes the cold really comes from the ground don't layer on yourself uh, on top layer at the bottom. I'm doing some like dance moves right now. <laughs> Third rule. And now I realized I'm speaking of rules, not tips. Third rule, third tip, whatever. Don't sweat, don't get wet. A really big thing for you is to regulate your body temperature that you will not be too hot that you will start sweating if you hike ski or do camp chores take off layers if you sit down if you eat put on layers if needed use your sleeping bag to put over yourself so you wouldn't be cold but when you start moving peel it all off because if your under layers get uh, wet and sweaty, uh, they uh, take away your body heat really quickly and it is really hard to dry clothes in the colder temperatures. So be aware of your sweatiness. <laughs> if you do sweat or your clothes get wet, change them immediately. Fourth tip, eat and drink a lot. And when I say a lot, I mean really a lot. 
during my uh, winter hike in the Fjallraven Polar in the Arctic wilderness, I ate uh, near 4000 kilocalories per day and I drank or I consumed with my uh, food as well, water between four to six liters per day. And I didn't pee like crazy. I peed in quite uh, like a regular person. Our bodies just need so much more energy and food and fuel and hydration to keep ourselves like functioning in these colder weather, colder, colder temperatures. It is really tempting not to drink a lot in the colder weather and especially women because we are sort of dreading to go a pee because you have to peel off all of your clothes and your bottom will get cold but I have a news for you usually we have quite a big layer of natural insulation on our buttocks so women don't be afraid to pee it goes really quickly and it is not as cold as you think so drink up drink up a lot a lot a lot did I say a lot yeah you don't want to dehydrate yourself and as you are not hot in the cold climate you are really tempted not to drink because you don't feel thirsty. I guess I never felt really thirsty during my winter hike, but I forced myself to drink uh, and that was something that really uh, made my body feel good and I really felt awesome during the whole hike. Tip or rule number five, protect your skin. So I made this mistake of uh, having only sun protection on my face. By the way, you need to have your sun protection on. I used SPF 50 on my face, but I totally forgot about windburn. And on the first day, I got some pretty serious windburns on my cheeks. During the day, I actually didn't think the wind is so bad. It was just ordinary uh, a day on the sled. It wasn't especially windy, but you know the wind factor. Wind takes down the temperatures a lot and my cheeks hurt it for the remaining of the hike. To protect that, use some really thick and uh, thick uh, oil-based cream or just cover up. You know, use the hats that are covering up your cheeks or just put up some scarves or buffs, whatever. There are tons of op op options there because windburn hurts a lot. You don't want to ruin your hike or not ruin. You don't want to be in pain <laughs> during your hike. Also, this skin protection tip applies to the hands. Don't do things with your bare hands. Always use some kind of uh, thin uh, liner gloves or just uh, Buckle up and do the things with your bulky gloves because when your fingers get cold, it is really hard to warm them up again, especially when you don't have some kind of external heater that you can use, fireplace or a campfire or something. So keep your hands covered, but don't forget your cheeks, your ears, your nose and everything that is uh, exposed to the winds and the sun. And I have a really quick bonus tip for you, tip number six. And actually this one I would call a rule because that's the rule of not being afraid of to go out there. Winter hiking is not so scary as people think because we are afraid of getting cold. But if you follow these tips and rules that I have listed uh, in this video, you will be warm and you will enjoy yourself. Winter hiking is so awesome. The experience is totally different than you have something in summer time. So go out there. Don't be afraid of making mistakes. Uh, learn from your mistakes and just enjoy the nature because what's important is that you go out there and you experience the outdoors. It's not important how you go out there or what tent you have or what sleeping bag. Important part is that you are out there. Does it make sense? Yeah, I hope it does. So these were my uh, five most important learnings or tips or rules from my winter hike from the Fjallraven Polar 2019. If you want to see more of my Fjallraven Polar uh, experience, I just finished uploading the Fjallraven Polar vlogs. If you haven't seen them, I will put a link here. So go check them out. In the meantime, go for a hike, especially for a winter hike when the season comes, because like is so much better in hiking shoes and I will uh, see you next time. Bye!